Preserved lemons, which are very essential to this particular recipe, are lemons that have been preserved in a salt lemon mixture for about 30 days. This is a preserved lemon. It's packed in a jar with salt. Lemons done like this have a silky texture and a very distinctive, unusual flavor. And they're very widely used in Moroccan cooking. The initial purpose of preserving lemons in salt and their own juice was to make lemons a winter fruit last all year long. Once you preserve the lemons, it is just the rind. This is the rind of one lemon. We're going to use this in our marinade. You can just cut it into smaller pieces and put into a food processor. About a half a cup of rosemary leaves. Seems like a lot, but not for such a big piece of lamb as we have here two cloves of garlic, and you can um, roughly cut these up just so that the food processor doesn't have to work so hard. And some leaves, these are um, beautiful mint leaves, a very nice accompaniment for lamb. You can again just coarsely cut these up and put these into the processor. And some salt, some pepper, and you can Just grind it up a little bit and process with about a third of a cup of olive oil. It's almost like making a pesto. Now the lamb is exactly as I received it from the butcher, beautifully prepared as a butterfly, but it really should be a little bit thinner. And you can do that yourself at home between two pieces of plastic wrap and use a meat tenderizer or a mallet. Don't use the prickly side, uh, that will tear through the plastic, but just use the smooth side and pound until it's pretty much all the same thickness so that it will cook nice and even. And you can spread half of this mixture on one side of the lamb and half on the other. A most really fragrant mix. You can fill every little nook and cranny, but just half on this side. There. Now fold your meat in half. We want to fit it into a shallow pan. And another bit all over this side. And this you can just lift up and slide into your pan. And you've made very little mess. Use the rest, that last quarter of your marinade on this side. This will overnight really flavor the lamb. That is perfect. Use your plastic to cover over the lamb and refrigerate at least eight hours, preferably overnight. So here's our gorgeous marinated big hunk of lamb. It looks really good. We're getting ready to roll it. Though the cut can be very pricey, this leg of lamb, it is very straightforward to prepare, even for the novice home cook, and it is one of the most popular lamb cuts uh, that we have. Now the lemon, we need just the peel, so I'm taking away that pulp. For this, it's very nice to see the strips of lemon in the meat. Cut the strips quite thinly so that um, they are easily eaten. A big chunk will be a little strong there. So that's your lemon peel. So now put your lamb on a board and spread the lemon peel all over the inside. This is going to be rolled up, so put this all evenly spaced on the inside. Lamb takes a lot of seasoning very nicely, and salt and pepper in the roasting process is very important. Oh, for all cuts of lamb. Now roll up narrow end to big end. Tucking in any little loose pieces. And here you are going to behave like a butcher. You are going to be tying this roast together with butcher's twine. It's slippery. Now cut a piece of string about six feet long, and this is cotton butcher's twine. Everybody has a different method for tying a roast. Slide your string under 
and tie into a strong knot. Butchers can do this so quickly. There. Okay, so now we are going to blanket stitch your roast. And take the string underneath. Just take the whole bunch of string like this and pull it through. It is the blanket stitch that is one of the first embroidery stitches you learn when you're learning embroidery. There, now you can go around this way under the whole roast and tie this to the other side. So you have a perfect roast, as nice as the butcher would do it. And now get this into your roasting pan, a parchment liner in the pan, a rack for the meat, and put this whole roast into a preheated 450 degree oven for 25 minutes, then add half a cup of water. Reduce the heat to 400 degrees and continue roasting 35 minutes or so. Let the lamb rest in the pan out of the oven for about 30 minutes before you carve it. Snip off your trussing strings and I'd slice the lamb, oh, approximately between an eighth and a quarter of an inch thick. And you can arrange as you wish on your platter. Garnish with wedges of fresh lemon. A tagine is named for the traditional dish in which it's cooked. And this is the traditional tagine. It's Moroccan in origin, and you can see that it has a shallow base with a distinctive cone-shaped lid that fits snugly inside. And this design allows the steam to rise on the inside of the cone and then drop back down onto the succulent food below. We are using a metal-based tagine, which has a conical top. It's a great dish. Lamb shoulder is the most versatile cut of lamb, and it's really tender and delicious for this particular dish. So to one pound of meat, add two tablespoons of flour some salt and pepper and toss the meat so that it's coated on all sides. And drop the meat piece by piece into two tablespoons of hot olive oil. This should fit pretty much in the bottom of the tagine. So get that meat browning and as soon as it browns you remove it and then we cook a few more things in the same pan. Most commercial American lamb comes from the West, primarily Colorado and California. They're fed on a mix of grass and grain, has mild taste and flavor. New Zealand and Australian lamb is primarily grass-fed and apt to have a stronger, more gamey flavor. So once you've removed the meat from the pan, add one medium yellow onion, peeled and chopped, two cloves of garlic, peeled and chopped, and stir that in the lamb juices and the remaining olive oil. Add two cinnamon sticks. Cinnamon is such a fragrant, wonderful spice, and it adds a depth of flavor to this particular dish. Salt and pepper, and two tablespoons of tomato paste. Put your meat right back into the onion. Stir well and add approximately one quart, four cups of water. Bring this to a boil, cover, and transfer to a 350 degree oven for about one hour. So this has been in the oven for one hour. Before the lamb comes out of the oven, cut up one butternut squash into one inch cubes. Add your squash, stir that in, and this goes back into that 350 degree oven for about 30 more minutes. So would you like to see what it looks like? A tagine can go seamlessly from stove to table for a lovely presentation. Oh, the squash is done, the meat is just plump. Now stir in a half a cup of prunes from which you've removed the big pits and let them just sit in the hot sauce, that hot gravy. And uh, remove the cinnamon sticks just so that no one gets served 
the cinnamon stick. These prunes can just plump up in the juice. And then for serving, uh, always prepare some couscous. Steamed couscous is so delicious. Make a nice little mound on your plate. And there are many, many, many varieties and versions of the meat tagine in Moroccan cooking. Once you try this one, I'm sure you'll get adventuresome and try some others. But this is a delectable dish. You and your family and your guests will really enjoy. Top with just a few leaves of coriander. That is a delectable dish. Kebabs are thought to have originated with ancient Middle Eastern cooks who, out of necessity, had to devise a way of cooking meat with limited fire. Their solution was to thread small pieces of meat onto skewers, which cook faster than larger ones. As you'll see in this recipe for curry, yogurt, marinated lamb kebabs, they cook in no time at all. So we have one cup of Greek yogurt, unflavored, could be low fat or regular, add to that a half a teaspoon of cumin, two tablespoons of finely chopped onion, and I'm mixing this whole dressing right in the same pan in which the lamb and the vegetables will marinate. Some honey, very nice, a half a teaspoon of honey, Greek honey if you have it, this is my own honey. The zest of one lime, we're making a very flavorful marinade. Lamb just takes flavors really, really well. We also want the juice of half of a juicy lime. If your lime is kind of dry, use the whole lime. It's pretty. So you can cut your lime in half and juice it right into this mixture. And always zest before you try to juice it. Be pretty hard to zest that. Some salt and pepper. Oh, two tablespoons of fresh mint chopped. And some curry powder, half a teaspoon. Get a nice flavorful fresh curry powder. Important that it be fresh. Spices do tend to get old, do tend to lose their potency, their flavor, and they also get rancid. So I think that's it for our marinade. Cut the meat into one and a half inch cubes. This is boneless leg of lamb. Some of the pieces may be slightly smaller than you can put two pieces together, but isn't that gorgeous, gorgeous lamb? Oh, so beautiful. You can cook these on a griddle pan right in your kitchen. You can also do them on a gas grill or on a wood-fired grill. Just be sure that you don't have the fire so hot that the kebabs burn. You want to cook them fast, but tenderly. So here we have the lamb all cut up. Pretty, isn't it? This is going to marinate for at least eight hours in the refrigerator, and you can do it overnight too. Now I'm cutting these, I call this quarter cut. Keep turning the squash a quarter turn so you're getting an odd shape. And always cut off the end like that, like that. It gives more surface area and it's prettier and chunkier. And the same with the yellow squash. And they all end up kind of being the same size, which is nice. And if you wish, a tiny bit more salt can be sprinkled and a little bit more pepper. Cover and refrigerate. So now here's lamb that has marinated with the squash eight hours. Make sure that the pieces are all about the same size and don't crowd the skewers. Bamboo skewers like these are readily available in supermarkets and cooking supply stores, and they should be soaked in water before you use them. It prevents them from burning once they're on a griddle pan like this, 
or on a grill. I also like sometimes to use these beautiful rosemary branches. If you have a big rosemary plant or have access to rosemary that's growing uh, quite large, you can use this because it's a woody stem. Just make sure that you cut the ends of these branches with scissors so you make a little point. Now to make a rosemary skewer, take a branch and just strip the leaves right off. They come off so easily. And oh, are they a fragrant, wonderful skewer. And these two can sit in a little bit of water until you're ready to use them. So now skewer meat. We're going to cook all the meat on the rosemary and I'm going to do all the meat together and the vegetables together so that everything cooks in the same amount of time. So per person, I would say four pieces of meat. I'm going through the meat through the longest side, exposing the largest bit of meat to the heat. Now this can be done before your guests arrive so you're not there with dirty hands skewering kebabs. And now for the vegetables, you can use the bamboo and go also through the squash. And this can be done alternating colors. So now just lay your kebabs on your grill or your griddle. And look how pretty these look on the rosemary. These are best eaten as soon as they're done, but they can be made in advance also and kept warm. And they take about four minutes per side, so stay nearby and cook away. So once they've cooked about four minutes per side, just remove them to a platter and enjoy. These look so great. And I'm sure you're going to love their taste. These should be, oh, between three and a half and four ounces each. Salt and pepper each side of each chop very nicely. Have a cast iron skillet heating on your stove and make sure that it's really hot before you add the chops. These get cooked four minutes per side, that's it. So here, just a little bit of oil in the bottom of the pan and so put your lamb one side down and time this so it's four minutes per side. Now the potatoes have been steamed. These are fingerlings. And you then peel and cut into chunks, about three quarter inch chunks. And we find that the kind of rougher you are with these potatoes, the better they fry. So I'm going to cut these into little chunks. And we're throwing them into the bowl. And you kind of shake the bowl and get them a little bit bruised. Your oil. Use a good safflower oil or a canola oil. Now see what I'm doing? I'm just bruising them a little bit. I'll add the bigger pieces first. So these are a different kind of French fry. Different shape, no skin on the potatoes, and they are already cooked. So just do a few at a time. Four minutes. And these are golden brown and crispy. Drain them on a paper towel lined baking sheet and sprinkle immediately with a little bit of sea salt. So it's been four minutes. We can now turn our chop. By the way, did you notice how well trimmed these are? I really like to eat every little bit of my lamb chop. So by trimming off virtually all the fat, except for a fraction of an inch, on the perimeter, you are making a really beautiful lamb chop. I think this little batch must be done. Oh, look at the color of these potatoes, how cute they are. Potatoes are almost done. The lamb is certainly done, four minutes per side. And look at the great color and the juiciness of those lamb chops. 
so mouth-wateringly delicious. Serve this with the potatoes and a little sprig of mint, very pretty. This is farmer's market spearmint, also very beautiful. And this is farmer's market peppermint. There are many, many different flavors of mint. My favorite, spearmint, but garnished like that. And served with, well, my favorite is supermarket mint jelly, but that's because of the color. Of course, you can make your own mint jelly and it won't look quite that green. And the potatoes, make a little platter of these, sprinkled with formaldehyde and salt. You will love this meal. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you on the next episode of Cooking School.